Hello! In this video I'm going to show you the first things that you should do after setting up your uh, CMF Phone uh, Pro 2 Pro. If your CMF Phone 2 Pro was just set up, there are a few things that are worth doing to enhance your experience. Uh, some of the things are also things that you need to do anyway, so let's do them at the beginning so we are not bothered by them anymore later. And also, some of them will personalize your phone. So let's begin by going to settings. In settings, there will be most of the things that we'll do. And if you are not connected to internet, it's important for the further steps. So go to network and internet, internet and select the Wi-Fi network you want to connect to. Um, then, once you're connected, scroll all the way down to system. Find system updates and check for update. If it says that you're up to date, you don't need to do anything now. But if it says that there is any update available, I'd highly recommend I installing that so your phone runs smoothly, securely and has the newest features. You'll just need to click on download and install, then wait until it downloads. You can still continue to use your phone while it's being downloaded. Later on, it'll prompt you to restart your phone. Once you restart it, the update will be applied. Now let's go back and continue with the next step, which is signing into Google account and there is a chance that you have done it. If you have, then skip to the next step where I go into Google Play Store. But if you haven't con uh, connected to Google account, go to passwords, pass keys and accounts. And if under accounts for owner, you don't have any Google account listed, that means that you don't have a Google account connected. So let's do that. It'll be important for two main reasons, but also some other minor ones. The first one is Google Play Store, which lets you download apps. And in order to use it, you need to be signed into Google account. Then the second way is, the second uh, thing is, um, is uh, the uh, Find My Device service, which lets you track uh, your lost or stolen device. You can also lock it, erase it or play a sound off of it. Uh, and it's pretty helpful. Uh, in order to use it, you need to be signed in on uh, to the Google account on this phone. And also then later on, you need to sign in to Google account on another device and go to Google Find My Device. Then you'll be able to track it in that uh, Find My Device the website or app. Uh, go to Add Account, then uh, select Google. Now uh, enter the email or phone number, or if you don't have an account, click on Create Account, of course, but I already have it, so I'm gonna simply uh, input uh, that uh, email and then I'm gonna enter the password as you can see I'm logged in and it asks you who will be using this device I will be using it so that's what I'm gonna select but if your child will be using it then most probably the further steps will, will vary a little bit now agree to the Google types of service without agreeing there is no way to add the account and wait a moment until it loads now it asks you if you want to back up your device data so if you do uh, leave that selected if you don't know then i'd also recommend leaving that selected so you don't lose your data in case anything happens to your phone now i'm gonna accept and uh, before we continue i'm also gonna change uh, the time after which my uh, screen goes off because I think it goes off too quickly. So if you want to change it as well, just go to display, then go to screen timeout and set it to whatever you'd like. I'm just gonna set it for 30 minutes because I'm recording videos and uh, I'd like it to not go dark. Um, then let's go to Google Play Store click on get started. I'm gonna skip installing additional apps and then select whether you want to use your password or biometrics to verify your purchases in Google Play Store. Mm, so I'm gonna select a uh, password because I don't have my biometrics set up just yet, but in a moment, I'm gonna show you how to set up your phone's biometrics. If you select password, you need to enter your Google account password, by the way. Now, once you click on done, it'll be logged in. Click on your profile icon in the top right corner, uh, My Apps and Games, 
and then go to updates available. I'd highly recommend clicking on update all because updating apps is important for the very same reason as updating your phone, but also some apps just won't work without an update. Now, uh, once uh, while it's being done, let's go to the settings and set up the screen lock and biometrics as I've said. Uh, so let's quickly find settings, then go to uh, security and privacy, device unlock, and if your screen lock is set to none or swipe, I would highly recommend setting it to something um, like pin pattern or password so no one else besides you has access to your private data. But before you do that, please make sure that you uh, won't forget your pin pattern or password because in case you do, then there will be no way to restore your phone besides uh, erasing everything that's on it, which we probably don't want. So mm, make sure that you'll remember it. Uh, but I think it's still worth it so only you have access to your data and uh, just choose your screen lock either pattern pin or password i'm gonna set a pattern and i'm gonna set it to something simple but if you wish set it to something more complicated so it's harder to guess um now click on next and re-enter it but if you set it to something more complex then make sure that you'll remember it as i said now uh, with the lock screen it asks you what to do with notifications on the lock screen and I prefer the option to show sensitive content only when unlocked, which means that I'll see the name of the apps I've received notifications from, but I won't see the details of that notification unless I unlock my phone. Let's click on done and then you'll see the fingerprint and face unlock. Um, I'm gonna set the fingerprint first, then I'm gonna talk about the face unlock a bit. Uh, let's enter the screen lock. Um, and I think that uh, fingerprint is great because it's convenient and secure, um, so I'd highly recommend that. Uh, then it tells you that uh, some third-party uh, third screen protectors may affect your fingerprint recognition or touch sensitivity, so um, you just need to have that in mind. And also, if you are switching screen protectors in the future, please make sure to re-enroll your fingerprint uh, so it works more most accurately and now click on set up and place your fingerprint uh, on the fingerprint sensor which is hidden under the screen lift and tap again several times and remember to move your finger between it scans so it scans the whole area of your fingerprint when it says place the edges move your finger even more to so it works in all grips uh, however you hold your phone now, once that's done, click on done. Uh, then there is face unlock, which I don't recommend setting up because it only bases on the camera. There are phones on the market that are based on IR sensors, but this one does not belong to that group, which means that it can be unlocked with a photo of you or by someone who looks similar to you, which makes your phone pretty vulnerable to uh, other people taking it and just putting a photo or a video of you uh, in front of it. Now let's unlock the phone and let's see how to unlock it in two different methods. So with fingerprint you just need to tap it in the correct spot. Even if the screen is off it should be working as you can see. Um, after a certain time you'll get used to uh, the place where the fingerprint sensor is. So you'll probably always hit it in the right spot. And to do it with a screen lock, just press on the power button, slide up and enter your screen lock. And that's how you unlock your phone. Now let's go to the next step, which is um, changing your wallpaper if you wish. If you don't want to change the wallpaper, you can skip to the next step. But I think that many people do that. So let's do it. Uh, as a wallpaper, you can set something provided by nothing. You can also... Um, Take a photo now, you can transfer it from your previous device or download it from the internet. I'm gonna take a photo now because I don't have any photos on my device right now. Uh, so let's quickly take it. Now once I have that photo, we can go to the settings. In the settings, go to um, the customization tab and then uh, you can find lock screen and home screen but before we do that first let's select the wallpaper 
so you can either pr select something provided by nothing as I said or click on more wallpapers then you can go to wallpaper studio to create something with AI you can also set a solid color or click on my photos to open your gallery then you need to allow all and select the photo that you want to set uh, it says that the image file is corrupted for some reason. I'm gonna try to fix it. Probably I just need to open the uh, gallery app at least once. Mm. So let's go to Google Photos, click on Get Started. Uh, and now let's see. The photo looks fine, not like it's corrupted. Let's go back to the wallpaper uh, setting and try set it, setting it again and now it works. I just needed to open the photos at, at least once probably. Uh, you can enable scrolling which means that if you scroll through pages of the home screen the wallpaper will slightly move um, uh, with, with it ac according to the direction you uh, scroll mm, but I'm gonna leave it to static then approve here and you can set it to lock screen or home screen uh, you can select it like that. I'm gonna set it to both and I'm gonna enable atmosphere. You can see when it's disabled, then it looks like that. And when atmosphere is enabled, it blurs out the um, home screen and makes it sort of move when you unlock your phone. Uh, then also you can enable glass effect. Maybe let's enable it, why not? Then click on done. And um, by the way, you can also click on the lock screen here to mm, customize the clock, if you wish. I like this one, so I'm gonna leave it. Then uh, you can add some widgets and customize these quick shortcuts at the bottom. Uh, but I'm just gonna exit out of this. I don't wanna do it now. Um, and now uh, our wallpaper is customized. I'm gonna show you how it looks on both uh, the lock screen and the home screen. You might have noticed that it was moving slightly but it actually opened something. Mm. Yeah, you can see it's, it's moving as I unlock the phone. Now uh, we can go to the next step which is setting up Google Pay. I know that lots of people do pay with their, with their phones in stores. And if you want to set up Google Pay, you simply need to either find a Google Wallet app, or if you don't have it, then go to Google, pay, uh, Google Play Store and search for that um, Google Wallet app. Now, once you've found it, click on install and wait until it gets installed. Now it's installed so I can click on open. Let's wait a moment and if you want to add the card feel free to click on add to wallet payment card then you can scan it with your phone's camera or enter the details manually uh, and once you do it, read all the notices, click on save and continue. You may also need to verify with your bank via phone call, a message or the bank app. And once that's done, you'll be able to pay with your phone in stores by opening the wallet app. By the way, it requires your phone to be unlocked and it's pretty secure because of that. And also it's secure because it's bank authorized. So you also don't need to worry about the security for that matter. Um, and if you want to quickly access the wallet without needing to do go to the home screen, there's a chance that if you scroll down from the top of your screen, scroll down again, you'll see the wallet icon. If you don't see, click on the edit button, find it on the list at the bottom and drag it up here then you'll be able to click on that and that opens the wallet app quickly so we don't need to go to the home screen. Now let's go to um, I think almost the last step which is sliding down from the top of your screen. You'll see a notification finish setting up your device. Uh, let's do that so we just don't do, need to do that later. Just click on start then if you want to insert, insert a sim card feel free to do it. I'm gonna skip it 
And now uh, it asks you if you want to copy your apps and data from your previous device. If you want, then do that now because if you click on don't copy, then that option may be unavailable in the future. Uh, of course, you can do that through third party services, but I think it's the best to do it with the native method. So if you want to do it with the native method, which works the best, do that now because it's not available in the settings. It's only available in if you're asked about it and you'll, you're asked only during the setup or post setup process. Um, I'm gonna click on don't copy because I don't have anything to copy, uh, but if you have anything and if you choose to copy, then you don't need to worry. All the steps are pretty intuitive. Now, that, now it asks me if I want to continue the setup. Let's continue that so I don't get another reminder and just um, select whether you want to agree to nearby share so people that have Android phones and have you in contacts will be able to share with uh, you different files. I'm gonna agree to that. Then click on continue. And uh, if you want to use Gemini hands-free by saying, hey, Google out loud, then feel free to turn it on. Now it tells about Google Pay, but I've already explained it. So I'm gonna skip it. Then here are uh, some additional things that you can do. And now uh, as the last step, we're gonna get to the settings. And in the settings, find battery. In battery, find, uh, I think it'll be adaptive battery, no. Battery health, uh, yes. Make sure that smart charging mode is enabled because it highly improves your battery longevity. Uh, so that's pretty great to have uh, that uh, smart charging mode enabled. And that's all for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.